Wow, the production blocks. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Oh, fucking shit. Ah. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, God. Why? Why do I do this? Every time, what the fuck? Why do I do this? If you've ever struggled with getting the thing that you needed to do done, avoiding things that you're supposed to be working on, that's something I struggle with a lot. It doesn't matter if it's something I want to be working on or if I'm excited to work on. There's an inherent perfectionism demand in my head, which means if it's not great, if it's not perfect, what is even the point of working on it? That's partially why this video took so long to make. So I'm going to turn it into an explainer, pitch you an ideology that will help you but mainly it's for selfish reasons. I'm going to pitch it so that I internalize this message, really listen to my own message. And the message is this, perfectionism is the enemy of good. If you aim for perfect, you'll never get anything done. And without getting anything done, you'll never advance and you'll never get better. The production vlog was supposed to be inspirational, a deadline accountability, but what it had turned into was I haven't produced enough, I haven't animated enough, I haven't produced enough art to put into the vlog it's later and it gets to a point where it's so late that I basically have to not put it out at all. Here's me putting my shame out there. Whatever you produce, just put it out there. Aim for garbage, aim for shitty. If mentally you've already accepted that this is shitty, the pressure is off. Now you can just have fun with it. In the arts, this is a big deal. When there's pressure, you're restrained. You don't try things and you don't grow, you, you plateau. The more you can just have fun with it, the more you'll play, discover new things. The more you'll be willing to come back, the more you'll be willing to spend the time needed to learn and grow. Allow yourself to produce garbage. Allow yourself that removal of pressure. That's going to be my methodology for these production videos. It's gonna be a lot more raw and a lot less edited. What I want aspiring animators, artists who are listening to this to take away from it is have fun with things. Care less about views, care less about how good it looks and just put things out there. You'll get much more feedback from people. You can grow. Being a perfectionist is actually detrimental, I would say, as a animator. Let's have fun. What's an easy flow? Next idea, what if I add this? That's great. But if it's bad, you tend to go, you know what, I'm done with this. I'm not feeling it. Let's find another thing. But perfectionism makes you go, I hate this, but I'm gonna keep going with it. Let's fix an ear, let's fix this one pixel, let's change the color very slightly, fiddle. And then you'll have spent hours, days, what have you, and you have one image. I think it's detrimental to growth. If you're just like, mentally, I'm just producing bad drawings today, then you can only do better than that. If you've allowed yourself and you've uh, created the expectation of bad art, whatever that is for you, you will only be pleasantly surprised. I think that's what I want for myself and that's what I'd like to pitch to y'all with everything that you're doing, sketchbook, animation, digital art, crafts. Just say, I'm just starting or I'm just doing, I have no expectations. If you find yourself having to go for expectations or there is an expectation there, make that that this is going to be garbage. Take that pressure off yourself and just do. I'm dedicating an hour, three hours to some garbage. The worst that's gonna happen is you produce that garbage. As they say with mastering any craft, that you need 10,000 hours. There's a certain amount of bad drawings that you just have to get out of your system. Don't let that be a daunting number. Let that be a beneficial thought. You have a clog in you of many bad drawings, many bad animations. Today, I'm getting some of that clog out. Just keep swimming. Oh, it's a bad drawing. So what? That's one less bad drawing. You produce something you like, keep going. Use that to motivate yourself. If you produce something bad, also great. There's no losing in this situation. The only loss is not doing. That's what I want to get across everyone. Perfectionism is the only loss because there's no such thing as perfect. There's just you overworking something, delaying where you're currently at. I have a big problem with this because I always wanted to think I need to try my hardest. I think some of that is positive and I will continue to do it. It's unavoidable, it's in me. I'm never gonna fully phone it in uh, on anything. Putting in effort is good, it's a trade-off. Don't do perfectionism because that's too much. No one to stop working on something or just say you're done. Put a timer and say, I'm doing two hours for this and wherever I end up, that's where I end up. If that piece is not done, you will work on being faster. Put a timer down 
and whatever you get done in two hours, whatever that timing is, three hours, that's what you get done that day. If it's not done, that's where your skill level is. And the next day, you have a little bit more of that gusto in you realizing where can you cut corners? Oh, I got to put a little bit more speed on this. When you just allow what takes as long as it takes, suffering is part of the process. You're not optimizing the best practice, fastest practice. You're just wasting time and overworking things, making slight little changes that no one's really noticing. Don't be a perfectionist. Do you have standards? And if you want to speed up, put a clock on yourself. Have those expectations be realistic. Realize what is a realistic amount of time to get something done. If it doesn't get done, that's fine. Post things more often. That's going to be my working theory now, especially with have them out more often, edit them less. That already hurts my feelings a lot, actually. It's, oh, at least for just working on it. It's going to get me around to working on it. But I am probably going to want to edit this some amount. I hate wasting people's time. So we'll see how that goes. But that is how I'm pitching it to everyone. And that is my new methodology going forward. Aim for garbage. Take that stress right off. Do whatever you can to make it garbage from the jump. There's an old story in the arts of how artists used to get around this idea of perfectionism. And it goes something like this. If you're working traditionally, the white page is very daunting. And so there's an inherent expectation there. It's crisp, it's beautiful, perfection there. But there's something about a white page that kind of breaks your brain. There's nothing there to engage imagination. People used to take their morning coffee and purposefully put it on that white page, creating a uh, coffee ring or tea ring to immediately ruin that page. The mentality is, oh, it's already garbage. It's already ruined. Pressure is off. Now you can just whatever happens. And if it's great, they can transfer it onto a new page, but the pressure is now off. That's in a nutshell what I want you to do. If you're drawing on paper, ruin it. Fill it with circles, lines. Practice small muscle dexterity. Control your line weight, make controlled circles, warm up your arm. Now you'll have a page of dashes, perpendicular lines, circles of varying sizes, spirals. Continue with that page. What does that look like? Is that a face, a fish? Start to engage your imagination. You have the dexterity of your muscles, both getting warmed up and strengthened. Also, you're warming up or strengthening your imagination. What is that? Do I like this shape? What can I do to make that shape more interesting? Maybe some contrasting shapes, some size variation, some line weight. Just have fun with it. You will surprise yourself. When you allow yourself this freedom of expression, you will find that, oh, that becomes a fun little butt frog. This becomes a fun little strawberry. What have you? Promise you will be surprised with your results. The expectations are ground level. If it isn't, you've spent some time today. You have improved. You have some more muscle dexterity. You have some more range in your imagination. The only downside is not doing. And that comes from perfectionism. If you have that concept of perfectionism, I don't want to sketch today. I'm not quite ready to sketch. I only want beautiful work in the sketchbook. Then you will never have beautiful work in that sketchbook. Aim for garbage. Say you set a goal, two garbage pages every day. That book will get filled. And I guarantee you're going to have some things you're very pleased with in that book. When we talk about getting out those bad drawings, it's not like you have a straight up clog and then you start to do good work. You'll like aspects of stuff. Some good work is going to sneak through. You'll go, I'm filling two pages of garbage every day. End of this month, I'm going to have a whole book filled with garbage. But the truth of the matter is... At the end of that month, you will have some things you really like in that book, whether that be some shapes, whether that be finished illustrations, because you have put in the time, you have grown. You're nitpicking with little lines. You've spent days and you haven't finished one drawing. You've stagnated. You're not trying new things. You're not growing. You're not learning and you're not, you're not having fun. Allow yourself to have fun. Remember when you were a kid, remember when you would just doodle in the margins of your math textbook exam sheets and whatnot. Did you care how that turned out? No, you were just bored. This is a little bit pre-internet. We didn't have screens so much. And I think allowing yourself to be bored is an aspect of that. It's very easy to get dopamine these days. We have not enough boredom. And if you're bored, you're going to go, hey, let me just doodle. Oh, it's pretty funny. Let me show this to my friend. Oh, they like it. They got their own idea for a similar doodle. Oh, they're battling now. We got doodle battles. 
right? We are overstimulated. Boredom is not something to really be avoided. Be bored. That's called relaxing. Being bored is called taking a day off. Over the top explosions and colors and movement. Just have a nap. Be bored and then see what sparks your interest. Maybe there's something over here. Let those ideas flow. Allow yourself to be bored. That creates a vacuum. Nature abhors a vacuum. You are more likely to create something there or have an idea. But perfectionism is the enemy. Avoid perfectionism. Aim for garbage. Aim for shitty. Half ass is better than no ass. Allow yourself to make mistakes. Go out there uh, and just try new things. And that's how growth happens. Or if I can already hear people in the comments. But I've been drawing garbage for a long time. And I don't want to draw garbage no more. I want to get good now. It's been years. It's bitch. I need something good. I, my feelings really hurt. So if you're already there, little person in the comments who's tired of making garbage, if you're already putting in daily drawings or life drawing, you're doing commissions, what have you, you're putting in the time and you find that you're not excelling once you've been putting in the time and removed that expectation of perfectionism or any expectations at all from yourself, and you're still finding that you've plateaued, the next level is to be your own boss and review your work. This is a hard concept for people to get behind but this would be the next step. You wanna go back and analyze every aspect of it. Is there a way that I can be faster at this? Where did I waste time? So what you'll see in a lot of the visuals here is me having to break this up into layers because I didn't already work in layers. That's because I wanted to see that things were working together as a whole before I committed to layers. What you've been seeing is me breaking up the existing artwork to copy paste onto new layers so that I can animate them and have a bleed allowance where movement is happening. If I had already worked with layers and separated things, I would have been done right away. <laughs> if the artwork was done, I maybe would have had to do little corrections, but probably I would have just been done. That's exclusively what you're seeing here. And that's hours of work, just breaking it up and then redrawing the missing parts of artwork that are underneath. That's something I will try to now do going forward when making any new artwork. So mentally it just checked out for me. But that's somewhere where I can spend time. And there's probably something you will notice like that with your own work. If you were actually recording your work and looking back, that could be beneficial to you. It's been beneficial for me to look back at my own work and see what I'm doing wrong. I'm noticing it as I'm doing it. Oh, all I'm doing is separating this into new layers. I have the time mentally to go, oh, that sucks. Let's not do that again, right? You won't have to record yourself, mentalize a part of your brain that says, this is not efficient. We could definitely cut corners here. Maybe keep a notepad, some sort of note-taking app open at the same time. You'll notice as you're working, I've wasted a lot of time here. I could save time by such and such. That's assuming you know what could be a more efficient methodology for your workflow, but that's really just for speed. You probably will notice some other things that you could improve upon that will help you get past the plateau. And beyond that, straight up people's artwork. And that's gonna sound really controversial. Let me know down in the comments. What I mean by this is for the learning process, plagiarism is plagiarism. Don't steal and then make money on a thing or claim it as your own. But for the learning process, steal. Fully just recreate someone else's artwork. Don't trace artwork because you're not analyzing anything when you trace. It's just like a mechanical thing. Um, but if you actually try to recreate that, you'll learn so much. If you find the artists you like, find the pieces that you love. There's artists we like, but they aren't a style you want to follow or go down. But then there's artists that I would love to be that sort of artist. You know, find some artwork and have it as a reference image in your Photoshop file or open while you're working traditionally. Try to recreate that artwork for its line quality, recreate it for the color choices that are made, but don't just color pick. Try to find that color inherently. Mix that color if you can, if you're working traditionally, or find the closest color by eyeballing that instead of color picking. It's like tracing. You're not actually analyzing. If you are just referencing and trying to recreate, you're gonna learn so much about what is actually happening there and getting past your bias. We all have an inherent amount of bias in us as artists and as human beings. That's what's keeping you in your plateau as an artist. You have these expectations, these biases, and you keep coming back to the same tools you've been using. You are aware that there are other tools, but you know that this is an easy tool and that it's worked in the past, so it's just easy to come back to. When you reference existing work and try to recreate that, you're gonna notice for color theory. 
you expect a, a hand is pink or a hand is like a warm brown or what have you. You have an expectation for what that would be. And then you go, and the shadow's blue, it's cold. Shadows are just cold. And then you do a flat color for all shadows on that hand and a flat color for the skin tone. And then you're like, I don't know how to take this further, right? When you get a photo of a hand or really analyze a living hand to create a photorealistic painting, digital or traditional, you're gonna notice it's not one color. It's every color in the spectrum. And shadows are the same. There is no one shadow color. There's different tonalities and they're pretty much every color under the sun again. Or in this case, the opposite of under the sun because it's a shadow. It's gonna make you open your eyes to see things as they truly are for the first time. Another aspect of this is to get out of your comfort zone. We are trying to get you out of that plateau, those tools that you're used to, that you know are successful. Get another artist that does a different kind of work than what you're used to. Expand your horizons because that's going to go, here's another tool set that you have in your belt now to use. You might not use it, but it will be helpful. Even if it's to realize, I definitely don't want to do this again. That's still valuable knowledge, but you'll find that you can incorporate a little aspect of this. Your color theory is going to be better. Your composition is going to be better. Your line works. You're going to get something of value from that artist. Using other artworks, other types of art, other artists work is another aspect of this. You want to get out of that plateau, out of that stagnation. Uh, I really just wanted to speak on procrastination and perfectionism. Perfectionism halts our progression and also halts our want to even get started. It's not the right time. I'm not good enough, etc. Who cares? Produce that piece of garbage that is uniquely yours because then you'll get it done. And once it's done, you can do the next thing that will be slightly better. Conceptually still a piece of garbage, but slightly better and then slightly better because you are actually making things. But if you're not, then it's unfinished work and then you're dead. Just put work out there. Just get it done. And I promise you, you will get better and that you will get more work out there. You'll enjoy yourself more because that weight, that pressure will be off of you. Enjoy your work, have fun with it. Uh, producing art comes largely from just being happy and loose and having fun with things. People that are tight and restrained uh, and not enjoying the thing that they're making, I don't think that they're gonna produce anything good. We want fun, loose, imaginative things coming at us, right? especially in this time period of I regurgitated artwork and endless sequels, just have fun with it. Produce a piece of garbage that is unique, that you love. Um, that's going to be so much more beneficial than something that is perfect, but we've all seen, right? Have fun with it, get crazy with it. That's the speech today. Subscribe for more from me on a regular basis. Join me uh, with these production vlogs, this music video, and all the other artwork you've seen here today. Let's look at our sponsor for today's video. We have a sponsor finally, which is crazy because I've produced absolutely no content. How could that be? Because the sponsor is me. I have a threadless store where I've done a painting. It's an, an existing painting, but I updated it for the sake of being a product for a threadless. If you're familiar with threadless, any artist can put up artwork onto the site and that becomes any number of products that they can print that artwork onto. So here I have created a poppy witch. This was a draw this in your style by my uh, partner that I did and then recreated here to be a decal, sticker, skateboard, right? Here's them now flashing by the screen. Look, it's nice, right? I really like the skateboard. That was just like a really inspirational time. It was really fun to paint this and get this artwork done. If you want to support me, this is one way to support me. A probably better way to support me is join my Patreon. For $5 a month, that you can just do the cup of coffee level, supporting me via Patreon to produce artwork and be an independent artist where I'm doing music videos, educational content, and vlogs. If you really love me, there is an educational tier where you will find uh, classes, lectures, and presentations from me once a month you can get a personal one-on-one -on -one review of your artwork from me, where I will help you personally improve an art piece. You can submit an art piece, whether that be animation, 3D, 2D, whatever your style is. I will review it and whatever you want to improve upon, I will improve that for you. I believe I have just for $15 a month, less than a Netflix subscription, you will get tangible results with your artwork. I do have to limit that to one person a month, 
for now. So that's all I can do. Now is a good time to start. I have the availability, basically. So with that tier, you become an actual full member of my Patreon. So you'll have access to exclusive content, like my educational content lectures and short form content, such as cheat videos for art, little videos that show you how to tangibly get better at, or at your practice with digestible videos a couple of minutes long. You get early access to the music video when it's done and all the production footage before it's up anywhere else. Join Patreon. That would help me a bunch. And you're going to be in the end credits of all my videos going forward. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought. Leave a subscribe. Uh, apparently, if you say and subscribe, the buttons highlight under the video. I'm just going to keep doing that because I want to see if it's working. Subscribe below and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. Uh... Thank <laughs> you.